Hello there, my loyal and honorable battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of Space Marine Chapters lore. Last time, we started on a chapter known as the Howling Griffins. I mostly told you about their history and hatred for the Word Bearers Traitor Legion. So today we will continue with more aspects of this chapter. These will include their organization, recruitment, homeworld, doctrine, and beliefs. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Howling Griffins are organized along the strict guidelines of the Codex Astartes, though the chapter sees this tome not as some holy writ, but simply as the finest military treatise ever written. Their tactics are in keeping with those prescribed by the Codex, and only waver in situations where Robut Gilliman's doctrine encourages innovation. Because of the work's comprehensive and pragmatic teachings, this is seldom a problem, however. Even by adhering to the Codex in the strictest fashion possible, the Howling Griffins sacrifice very little flexibility. They remain more than capable of responding to any known opponent, and of adapting quickly to the abilities of a new one. They are organized into battle companies with specific roles in keeping with the directives of the Codex Astartes. Cases of inconsistency with its tenets are generally only due to the high rate of turnover among the chapter's membership. Because these space marines sustain a high degree of casualties and recruit so aggressively, they are not always capable of fielding enough battle brothers to keep all ten companies filled. Sometimes, the chapter has transferred members between companies, so that one can be dispatched for an engagement, while another undergoes resupply and retraining. Though members often view an assignment to resupply with disdain, most verbally accept its necessity, while simultaneously attempting to transfer to another company before it is deployed on a combat mission. This chapter is also notably well provided for in both arms and war gear. The chapter's extensive forges on its homeworld of Mancora work tirelessly to keep the chapter supplied and to make good on battlefield losses as they occur. The capacity of their armories is so high that they are not only to keep pace with the chapter's aggressive nature, but are also able to manufacture and maintain some of the rarer battle machines available to the Adeptus Astartes. These can include the war machine Land Raider Prometheus and the advanced Mark VIII errant pattern power armor. Also of note is the chapter's tradition of maintaining powerful psychers in its ranks. Due to no small part to the recruits it adopts from its homeworld of Mancora, whose population produces an unusually high number of the Psyker mutation. In addition to Mancora, the Howling Griffins also recruit from several other worlds, including Denar IV. This is a necessity for the chapter, as without these additional worlds, it would be impossible for it to recover the heavy losses it suffers. It is important to note that in spite of this option, the Howling Griffins still continue to preferentially recruit from Mancora. Its volatile nature ensures that candidates from this world are more than capable of fulfilling the chapter's needs. Some of the other recruiting options for the chapter do have cultures which are less focused on developing candidates which will prove to be worthy and capable initiates. An additional reason for the chapter's aggressive Mancoran recruitment efforts is that the planet has a history of producing a significantly higher number of psychers than would normally be expected. Many of the individuals with these talents are recruited into the Howling Griffins as aspirants. However, the chapter's librarians also oversee the planet's population for undue signs of psychic activity. The Codiciers weed out any who might possess a risk of warp contamination or demonic possession. All this has resulted in the chapter's ability to maintain a strong librarium down through the centuries. This fact is reflected by the number and raw talents of the Howling Griffins librarians. 
Ultimately, these uniquely talented space marines exercise their gifts in a manner that is consistent with the teachings of the Codex. However, because the chapter has an exceptionally high number of these psychers, their services play a crucial role in shaping the chapter's engagements. The Battle Brothers represent a crucial strategic asset, so the chapter's officers take care to utilize them in the most effective way possible. Their librarians are trained in the standard Codex ways, and, with a few minor traditional variances, have been taught to live by the word of its teachings. Howling Griffin's librarians have a number of unique psychic abilities that are only used by the psychers of this chapter. These abilities can include The Blood Oath The librarians take their oaths very seriously just as any Howling Griffin's battle brother and can bind these oaths psychically with blood to make them more potent and enduring. The Librarian calls upon his eldritch powers when they take a oath at the start of a mission, committing not just his word but his spirit to the binding, and seeding it with a few drops of his own blood. Any other member of a Howling Griffin squad may choose to participate in the oath-taking with the Librarian, which will psychically compel them to carry out its terms. The Griffin's Howl the Librarian calls out to the warp and draws forth a mighty cry like a diving bird of prey to cow his foes with fear and shatter their resolve. This cry is also a potent weapon against the warp spawn and can shake the ties which bind them to the material plane, sending them back screaming into the Empyrean from where they came. Periclitor's Bane the Howling Griffin's intense hatred for the Word Bearers and their demon prince Periclitor has been translated by the chapter's librarians into a number of abilities targeted at the Chaos Space Marines of the Traitor Legions. When the librarian summons up this power, he is creating a psychic resonation that can cause agonizing pain to the Traitor Astartes present on the field of battle, badly eroding their effectiveness in combat. The feudal world of Mancora serves as the homeworld of the Howling Griffins chapter and has done so for all of their known history. The history of its days prior to the chapter's arrival is uncertain, those records long lost to the vagaries of time. Located within the Ultima Segmentum, Imperial records clearly indicate that the chapter has deliberately and artificially prevented the world from advancing beyond a pre-industrial technological base. Through an uncharacteristic degree of covert operations and manipulations, the Howling Griffins have also kept the world's feudal city-states on a constant war footing, which has led, in turn, to a culture which has a poor record of its own origin. This enables the Howling Griffins to select from a pure gene stock of hardened warriors, who display all the desired traits of ferociousness, stoicism, and tenacity. From the earliest days of their pre-recruitment, the warrior elite of Mancora, who will one day become battle brothers of the Howling Griffins, are brought up in a war-torn feudal world of pre-industry. In this crucible of battle, personal, familial honor, and martial duty, the citizens are made into the perfect initiates of the chapter. It is in this life that they learn the value of glorious warfare and to respect and rely on their brothers in arms. While they may lack the technology even to comprehend the military might of the Adeptus Astartes, the people of Mancora are predisposed, by the culture of their birth, to hold dear the martial ideals valued by their space marine masters. When the day finally comes that a new recruit is elevated into the ranks of the Adeptus Astartes, it is almost as a continuation of his previous life, albeit on a much grander scale. His heraldry is no longer that of his local household, but is instead the griffon rampant. His allies on the field are no longer the members of the local nobility, they are his battle brothers. The lands he fights to defend is no longer his city-state, it is the entire Imperium of Man. 
When he's first clad in the ochre and crimson livery, he sets aside the military training and traditions of his past life and takes as paramount the teachings of Gilliman, as inscribed in the words of the Codex Astartes. The chapter's fortress monastery, known as the Proud Eyrie, oversees a substantial amount of well-equipped manufactoria, which are kept isolated from the world's native inhabitants. These manufactoria are productive and capably equipped. Such a highly functional forge and unrestricted access to its output has played a crucial role in the chapter's ability to remain equipped at all times. This vital asset permits the chapter to continuously resupply its fleets, and to have sufficient reserves and war material that its initiates can undergo thorough training prior to entering the field. The Griffins strive to remain within the tenets of the Codex Astartes. In turn, this made it standard for the chapter's battle brothers to master each discipline in turn, as the Codex dictates. Competition within the chapter for excellence is intense and encouraged, but is never allowed to spill over into outright discord. The chapter's drive to fulfill its members' oaths often influences, but never dictates, their tactical decisions. If a battle brother makes his commanding officers aware of an oath and an opportunity arrives to fulfill it, attempts are made to accommodate his need. However, such considerations are only permitted if the situation does not substantially increase the level of risk for a particular engagement. These space marines value their oaths and their honor very much, but they are generally not willing to accept unnecessary casualties to fulfill them. There are of course some exceptions to this rule, particularly as pertains to the word bearers and their demon prince Pericletor. The Howling Griffins are a proud and warlike chapter, the glorious and storied role of its history a testament to its reputation. Engaged in near-constant operations throughout the Imperium and beyond, the Howling Griffins are paragons of the martial spirit of the Adeptus Astartes. They take special pride in their oaths, seeing each as an eternal conflict to be pursued until the sworn deed is complete. Before battle, additional oaths are added to each battle brother's already exceedingly long list some for the accomplishment of chapter goals, and others which are far more personal. Once an oath is taken, a Howling Griffin's battle brother will go to extreme lengths to complete it, even if it takes decades. Completed or satisfied oaths are a badge of honor, often inscribed on parchments or directly onto the Howling Griffin's armor. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Howling Griffins for today. Are these one of the chapters that you favor? Let us know why and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or enjoyable? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel alive, please go check my Patreon page the link for which is in the video description. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a very peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.